Welcome back. This is the fifth and final strategy for this series on an introduction to speech, language, and communication. Now, when it comes to communication, we so want our children to speak and to communicate with us. But we need to remember some key basics. Firstly, all children do communicate. It is just to be determined whether their method of communication is appropriate or not. For example, it is very appropriate for a baby to cry very loudly to communicate as they are too young and have not developed any other language skills at this point. It is even acceptable for a toddler to have a meltdown and throw themselves on the floor when they are cranky or tired. Parents often observe their behavior and respond by giving them a nap. This, however, would not be appropriate of a six or seven year old child. Let's look at some other examples. A child walks away from the table every time there's a maths worksheet put out. Okay, let's do some work. Do work. <coughs> or another child covers his ears and starts screaming when someone starts to sing a song they really don't like. It's our song time, everyone. Let's sing a song. The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels on the bus go round and round all day long. Or a child is asked to turn off the TV and he immediately runs over and pushes a chair over. Okay, TV time is finished. It's all done. Mm -hmm. In all the above examples, the child is using inappropriate or challenging behaviours to communicate. So together with your spouse, number one, identify a challenging behaviour your child uses to communicate. Secondly, note down how you would prefer your child to communicate. Remember, this might not always be speech. It could be through pictures or devices. Thirdly, to plan out how to teach your child to communicate effectively. If your child is not ready yet for speech, there are many forms of nonverbal communication that is appropriate and it needs to be acknowledged and reinforced so that a child with autism can understand the power of communication. Some examples include a child looking at a preferred item, a child looking at the adult and smiling. A child reaching for a preferred item again. A child pulling an adult's hand. In each of these examples, it is very important to help build a child's confidence in communication and to acknowledge it as well as to model the appropriate language in a short and meaningful way. Cookie, here you go. Lastly, communication is bi-directional, or in other words, a two-way street. We strengthen a child's communication to us by modeling communication to our child. Number one, use visuals regularly and frequently to communicate. We can't emphasize this enough as it will really help reduce challenging behaviors and helps children look forward to what is coming up ahead. Number two, model appropriate language every chance you get. So if your child is learning single words, use one to two words at a time. If they're speaking in short phrases, use short phrases around them. By modeling the appropriate language, you are strengthening your child's bank of receptive language, which will hopefully develop into expressive language as well. Now, just in case you try this out and find that the strategies don't seem to be working, always go back to the three key strategies of ABA. Have you broken down the skill enough? Meaning, is the word easy enough for your child? Is it short? and simple. Have you been working on the other foundational skills such as cooperation, attention and imitation first? Is there sufficient reinforcement? Is your child motivated to request for these items or to use phrase completion? 
Are you acknowledging, giving praise, and reinforcing all efforts to communicate, including sounds, opening their mouth, nonverbal communication as well, be it pulling your hand, looking at you, reaching for an item? Or is your child starting to feel pushed and overwhelmed? Is there sufficient practice? We can't emphasize this enough for children, just beginning to learn to speak. Frequency of words used is the most important in this case, not articulation, not range of vocabulary, and not even the length of sentence. Record down how many sounds or vocalizations your child is making on a daily basis so you can start to see those numbers go up based on how much practice they have. And so we have come to the end of our starter kit. All of us at EAP sincerely hope that these units have been helpful to you and that you are able to implement some, if not all these strategies immediately at home with your child. Please do not hesitate to contact us if you should need any further support and also to subscribe to our Autism at Home website and our social media platforms on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook for regular updates. From all of us at EAP, we wish you and your family the very best.